Hello, Pilgrim. That's right. Peter addressed Bible believers, saying, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Duh. -huh. And Bible believers you can hear the Bible taught every Saturday at high noon and Sunday at 9.30 p.m. right here on 91.5 Freedom <laughs> FM. Pilgrim. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the conclusion of our two-part study of Revelation chapter 11, verses 13 through 19, titled, The Third Woe. This is part two of two. You will find all of our messages in MP3 and streaming video, including all of our studies on the book of Revelation, available for free download or online listening and viewing at KJV. BibleBelievers.com. These messages are totally free of charge and are available at KJVBibleBelievers.com. As we join the message in progress, we will pick up just a couple of minutes before the point where we left off in part one. As we were looking at examples of the rebellious human race becoming hateful and angry in their demand for their right to sin and in their hatred for those who stand against sin. With that introduction, we now join part two of two of our study of Revelation chapter 11, verses 13 through 19, titled, The Third Woe. The nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, I'm going to come back to that, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. <laughs> right on. I'm going to come back to that. But right on, I'm coming back to it. The nations were angry. And I want to ask you, can you see this stage being set? Every, it's like every, every one of these is like a piece of furniture that's going on the world stage. And God is is showing us just a glimpse. Kimberly Chang, Kimberly. Get out of here. Get out. Of here. Chris, we are Get out of here. We are uh, I get we're being a little back here. I get more than you want. I get more than you want. We need to call the police. She just wants to express her viewpoint, sir. I'm standing here with Philly. This little old lady is standing up for the right thing when it comes to Mary. She's surrounded by sodomites. They're threatening her life and a news reporter on the scene. Listen, and the nations were angry. We could spend all night long watching this kind of report of the sodomites running into churches and stopping church services, harassing Christians out on the street. This, this little old lady, who's my mother's age, and if the cameras weren't there, they probably would have right, killed her. Quite obviously, there is so much noise down, we can't right. hear our reporter Kimberly Chang, but to get our viewers up to date here, there is a rally down there for people who were in favor of same-sex marriage. The woman you saw in yellow came up. We think there was a man or perhaps two men with her. She obviously is against same-sex marriage. She had a, a cross in her hand, and as you can see, that happened about 10 minutes ago. Now, in just the last few minutes, as she is uh, being interviewed by Kimberly Chang, uh, many of those people are loudly protesting her presence. And again, they, we don't police know if the police arrive. arrived on the scene or not yet, bro. And without using this live picture right. of what's They're going on, there, it seems that this scene has really not uh, lessened in uh, aggressiveness since we, we picked this up about 10 minutes ago. Maybe we can show a, a little bit of the incident that sparked what is now turned into a very, very heated debate right now uh, amongst these people that have come to Palm Springs City Hall. To now watch, this is what happened to her. And as you see there, that is Phyllis Burgess, the woman that we've just identified, and she walked there holding, as you can see, a large cross, along with, appears to be a couple of other people, and 
within just You're moments, stomping the cross. For that cross to be pulled out of her hand, and the woman standing by as the cross gets trampled, and, and the man that you just saw live standing on the right side of your screen, um, very now watch this guy here. Watch him. The camera, it appears, is the one who is stomping on that cross. And what we're clearly seeing, and again, this happened though roughly eight, nine, ten minutes ago. Uh, there's a lot of anger and a lot of. That's what you're looking at. Both sides. And it's. Was that Alex? Was that Alex Jones? Yeah, we'll come back to it in a minute. That that story is just one of dozens that you will find have happened all over the country, but it's you notice local news, and only the local news airs it. And so locally, these get aired all over the country, and they never hit the national news. If it was the other way around, it would be national news. Yes. And I want to say something. And I back it up. I can back it up. The Roman Catholic Church has become a sodomite institution. And that is why, even though they publicly will not endorse gay marriage, as it's called, they are a sodomite institution. The majority of their priests are sodomites. Their congregations are filled with sodomites. You can go to any Catholic church in this town, and when you walk in, you will see them, men with men and women with women, in the pews. And the media, who are Roman Catholic, are sodomite. Both. They are not contradictory terms. Lucifer is a deceiver and a liar. And you've got to learn that we are living in a time with what you see is not what you get. And the nations are angry. And the time of the dead, I want you to look at that, the time of the dead that they should be judged, that's in heaven and they're actually talking about people who are still on the earth. They have taken the mark and they're reprobate and gone, but I believe we're seeing that now. Dead in sin and trespass. That's exactly what I, uh, Ephesians two one and two. It, the unsaved who reject God are described as those who were dead in trespasses and sins. That used to be us if we are saved today. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Is that not what you just saw? Yes. Yeah. The children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh. All those men that you saw on that camera are a bunch of sodomites. They are filled with lust. They're driven by lust, and it works out in anger and violence. Not just against the poor little old lady, against each other. The domestic violence rate among sodomites is around 75% of homosexual couples are involved in domestic violence. It's triple the heterosexual population. You are going to lose your health care benefits because we now cover sodomites. We cover them, and we cover their partners. They are a diseased people. They are a diseased community. Their disease levels are higher than the heterosexual, and you just doubled it when you took on the partner benefits. And it's going through government, and it's going through the private corporations, and you are going to lose your health care with your family because of the sodomites. And you'll never hear that on the news. Go do your own math. And you will find out that your family is losing your health care benefits because we now not only cover the sodomites and all their diseases, we double it by covering their partners. And those partners, it's not a marriage, it's a legal arrangement where they still have sex with dozens of people a year, most of I mean, I'm saying most of them. Most of them have multiple sex partners each, but they remain together legally under the same roof and taking the benefits, the health benefits. That's the real world, folks. That's the world that is not being painted in the news and in not being painted in the congregations of the churches around the city and around the country. But that's the real... And it says also, among whom also we all had our conversation times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, 
and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And the less percentage of Christians there are on this planet, the greater percentage of children of wrath, which means the greater the persecution and the violence against the innocent, including the Christians, including little babies, including children. And it's just going to get worse. And so you as a Christian have to use wisdom. Because that's where we're heading. And I ask this question, is today's obsession with death just a fad? Or is it preparation for the time of the dead? Most of the television shows and movies that are uh, popular over the last few years have been about dead people or death. Whether it's the vampire thing, the zombie thing, or just the complete decimation of tens of thousands of people and killings. It's, a, it's an obsession with death. Folks, if you are obsessed with death today, you're not getting that obsession from God. If you love seeing death, you have opened yourself up to a satanic spirit. And I say that because a lot of Christians are obsessed with death. A lot of professing Christians are obsessed with it. That's not from God. There's something wrong. What do you have to do? Repent and throw the crap away? Throw it in the garbage? Stop watching it? Stop listening to it? Whatever it is is filling your head with that spirit that makes you love death. Get rid of it. Otherwise, it's going to bring you down. And it says, this is very interesting, and should us destroy them which destroy the earth. Those claiming to protect the earth and love Mother Earth are actually destroying the earth. Paul mentioned the Sierra Club. Most of the environmentalist groups in the world today are actually destroying the planet. And they are funded by people who are destroying the planet. Now, it is hard for you to just sit there and think how that works. So, I, and I want to give you this little clip and show you how this works. And this is the um, Alex Jones Infowars, and I just give a disclaimer. I don't recommend everything about him. He denies the rapture, but he does claim to be a Christian. And he sometimes sounds a little new age when he talks about spiritual things. But that's still better than anything you're getting on your local news or your national news, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN. So with that disclaimer, I want you to watch this little thing. This is about Bill Gates. And I want to tell you, if you don't know this already, Bill Gates is funding with his billions, he is funding the uh, killing of human Bill beings. Bill Gates has funded an experiment to spray atmosphere with sulfur particles now in New Mexico. He's been funding this for years and they've been t talking about what they might do, different proposals. Sulfur is only one of the proposals. There's also aluminum dioxide, barium salts, you name it. But this is an experiment that will take place in about a year at Fort Sumner, New Mexico, where they're going to send a balloon 80,000 feet up in the air to spray these particles supposedly all to fight global warming. Now I want to tell you, when you look up in the sky, when I was a kid I used to see clear blue skies like you saw today yeah. all the time. You rarely see those anymore. And when you look up in the sky and you see these jet trails, they used to dissipate in a matter of minutes. Now they don't. The reason why is and for years, people have been telling people this, and they've been called crazies and kooks. Now they admit it. They're openly admitting it now. They are filling jets in the exhaust with these aluminum and sulfur molecules that cling to the water vapor in the exhaust and go out into the atmosphere in order to reflect sunlight and save Mother Earth. What it does is it produces the weather problems we've been having. People say, I don't believe in man-made global warming. That's right. I don't either. I believe in man-made stupidity. Yeah. These people are destroying the earth. They are changing the weather. And then the sulfur and aluminum comes down here and you breathe it. Alzheimer's. And you get Alzheimer's, they found aluminum yep. in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. Sulfur rips your lungs up. 
Uh, less people are smoking and lung disease is going through the roof. Why? Because of chemtrails and your perfumes, your colognes, and your hairsprays. Go do the research. They're filling up your perfumes, your colognes, your hairsprays, your antiperspirants and all that with poisonous gases that if it was in a bottle and sitting on this desk, I would be arrested. But if I put something that smells good in it and spray the room with it, it's okay. That's the truth. These people who claim to be saving the world are destroying it, and God is going to destroy them. Isn't it funny how they're using one of the elements of their father, the devil's final resting place, sulfur and brimstone? Sulfur and brimstone. Yeah. 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 However, Listen to a little even more some of the most staunch environmentalists who back the pro global warming push say this is dangerous and can have catastrophic effects on the earth. Well, of course. But they're saying specifically if this was triggered in the wrong way, it could cause drought and famine while trying to cool the planet, really just reversing everything that they claim global warming would do and doing it on purpose through their geoengineering experiments. Call it chemtrailing, call it what you will. We've done a lot of research on this. It's been ongoing for a while. And again, you see Bill Gates not only backing Monsanto, not only backing all kinds of dangerous genetically modified food and organism projects, but now spraying the skies, salting the earth. And as you might have guessed, there's GMO crops from Monsanto and other firms specifically meant to deal with too much aluminum in the soil, with too much of these other salts in the soil. Did you follow that? They're putting the aluminum and sulfur in the air to come into our soil, and then they're developing the seeds and the plants to be able to live in those conditions so that normal seeds, as given to us by God, will die. And the only food you can eat will be Monsanto food. Right. Did you, did, did, she ain't making this up. This just passed protecting Monsanto from anybody suing them. They are now a protected organization, a corporation. This is what Mussolini did, and it's called fascism. That's right. Thank you. And he was tame. That guy was a puppy dog compared to what they're going to do. And that's why God's going to unleash on them. So I want to tell you something. When you see God killing a bunch of people, don't buy the lie that He's just a mean, nasty God. If you will do your homework, you'll find out He's got His reasons. And when He kills these people during the Great Tribulation period, He's not killing a bunch of innocent little puppy dogs. He's killing people who have killed people. He's killing people who have blood on their hands during that time. It's Darwinism. It is. People Survival of the fittest. Right. If you're less than young, it's their religious that. belief. Absolutely. Just a little bit more of this, and then we'll get back to the stuff. I don't know stuff. if they have a sulfur variety, but we're going to have a lookout for that. And again, involved in the project is David Keith, one of the main geoengineering scientists who's always said these proposals are good ideas. He and others have presented before the Council on Foreign Relations and other bodies to promote it and make sure it's not too heavily regulated. That was part of the UK-US study from a couple years ago. Me now, there's a lot more to that. I'm going to cut it off because I want to carry us in through the, the rest of the night. I'm planting the seeds so that you can do your own homework. You're hearing this. Now, you take it home, and you keep your eyes open, your ears peeled, <laughs> and you listen, and you will hear this stuff. I said it before, I didn't realize how many Black Odyssey vans there were out on the highway until I owned one. Once it gets in here, then all of a sudden you start to see it. But right now, the masses are dead cold. They're in a coma, spiritually and mentally, intellectually. And you go out on your Facebook and stuff and post this stuff, and they'll just block you. Because they don't want to see it. Well, not that they think, not that they've actually checked it out and found you're crazy. They just don't want to see it. Well, because it'll lead them to God, and they're not done sinning. That's right. That's right. That's what's. They're yeah. They're not done sinning. That's right. And they'll they'll admit that on Judgment Day. They'll they'll face all that. So we come to the close of the chapter, and we're we're in heaven. Now we're back coming back down to the earth for the verse 19 it says and the temple of God was opened in heaven 
Now, when you read your Old Testament, every time you see the tabernacle and the temple, you need to remember that is a carbon copy of something in heaven. And so when you're reading those long, drug-out explanations of everything in the temple, maybe if you realize that that's a carbon copy of something in heaven too, it might interest you a little bit. The colors mean something. The numbers mean something. The symbols mean something. Everything in there means something. God didn't waste any paper and ink, folks. It's all there for a reason. Now look, everybody remember Raiders of the Lost Ark? I found it. I found it. It says, and there was seen in his temple the ark <laughs> of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. There is an ark. I've got to mention this. I, yeah, I, I didn't remember if I put this. This is a huge doctrinal thing that's catching on in Roman Catholic, Protestant, and even among Muslims and New Agers. That Mary is the ark. Wow. Chris Lom, baby. Chris so, Lom. Colson with, J. Sheen said that the Catholics and the Muslims would come together through Mary. Because Fatima was the That's beginning right. of that. Because That's Fatima right. is in Islamic territory, and Muslims go to these uh, Marian shrines as much as Roman Catholics do. And they are teaching that this Mary carried the word. So the ark, which carried the testimony, Mary, they, they come up with these comparisons and they have now Mary is the ark in the temple. Perfect bridge for Chrislam. Chrislam, that's right. Isn't that the whole, well, the whole New Age, yeah. uh, across the board, Marian apparitions aren't just a Catholic thing. I mean, the Hindus... Sure, but she's a female, so it's and, Gaia. Well, yeah, that's what she... She is basically just Gaia or, or uh, Ishtar... Yeah. Astarte, Semiramis, all these, Diana, all these goddesses, they just replace those names with Mary and they're happy. Isn't that like Maybe. an image of an idol? Well, that's what it is. It is. It is idol worship. Wow. And they're putting her in a place where, you know, she's human. She praised God, her Savior. She's not a Savior. She was saved by the child that she bore. Amen. Yeah. It is a perversion and it is blasphemous. And, but that is the Vatican version of Revelation chapter 11, verse 19. And uh, if you go on the internet, you'll find all these. These are Catholic teachers. This is a Roman Catholic teacher. This lady is a very zealous convert who now is evangelizing for the Roman Catholic Church. They're all teaching that Mary is the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. Well, we know that that's lunacy. And the extreme error and huge apostasy of our day that I, that's just one, of, you know, week after week we've shown you a little bit of time, all this apostasy taking place. That is actually an encouraging sign to the Bible prophecy student. Because as I said, we are living in the day predicted. You are seeing God's foreknowledge and prophecy fulfilled. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that means that when the rapture takes place, there will be no believers left at that moment. When the rapture takes place, no believers are left on earth. And then God will at some point after that call out the 144,000 that we read about in Revelation 7, they will preach the everlasting gospel found in Revelation 14, and many will be saved. But at the point of the rapture, when the rapture takes place, for however long is between that time and God calling out those 144,000, there is no faith on this planet. The entire planet is an apostate planet the moment after the rapture. And we are seeing the build up to that very moment. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this study. And we do thank you for the encouragement we have in knowing that as we see these terrible things happening, the stage being set, and yet we know that your coming is so near. We're going to see Jesus real soon. Can't wait, Lord. I just cannot wait.
Come quickly, we pray over and over. We mean it, Lord. I'm ready to go. I know at least most in this room would agree with that, and I pray for those who don't. And Lord, I ask that You help us to keep our focus and understand that You are in control. And as we see the world going out of control, as far as we can see, we need to remember You will never lose control. You are sovereign. You are in control. We have nothing to fear. We don't need to fear that those who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill body and soul and cast it into hell. Knowing that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and that we have been assured of eternal salvation. And so we fear the one who can kill the body and the soul, but we know that we now belong to you and you have saved us and we belong to you for eternity. And I pray everyone in this room would have that encouragement in their heart tonight as they leave and as we finish our week. May Jesus be glorified, Jesus alone, who deserves all the glory and praise. Amen. Amen. That concludes our two-part study of Revelation chapter 11, verses 13 through 19, titled, The Third Woe. All of our messages on MP3 and streaming video are available at kjvbiblebelievers.com. You can write to us by clicking on the Contact Us link at kjvbiblebelievers.com. You can also write to us and send it by email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com. Or you can send your letter by U.S. Postal Service to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. That mailing address again is P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. We love hearing from folks all over Central Ohio who listen on radio and hearing from folks all over the world who are listening and watching on the Internet. And we want to remind you of the fact that we not only offer these messages free of charge, but we encourage you to copy them and pass them out to your loved ones or even to perfect strangers. You can have your own personal ministry. And whether the person you hand these materials to is a lost sinner or a saved sinner who needs to be taught the words of God, you will be making an eternal difference in the life of a precious soul. Jesus is coming soon, and now is the day of salvation. I am Pastor Greg, and thank you for listening. Bible Believers Fellowship presents a verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Revelation, available free to view on streaming video or download in MP3 audio by simply visiting kjvbiblebelievers.com. Download these free expository studies of the book of Revelation and share them with others by putting them on flash drives, burning CDs or DVDs, or simply post links to our messages in email or on your own Facebook or other social media site. Just visit kjvbiblebelievers.com, look under Videos in the menu to the right of the page, and click on the Book of Revelation link where you will find hours of free Bible studies and streaming videos, and eventually you will be able to access our study of the entire Book of Revelation. If you prefer MP3 audio, click on the MP3 audio page link at the very top of our webpage and use the search to pull up our Book of Revelation studies. All are provided free of charge thanks to the free will offerings and support of the Bible Believers Fellowship family and kjvbiblebelievers.com. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Visit the online ministry of Bible teacher and elder of Bible Believers Fellowship in Worthington, Ohio, Michael Kaler. Visit 2 Timothy 2-15.org. That's 2 Timothy 2-15.org.